The golden age of strategy games from two decades ago might be tough to live up to, but we have some contenders fast approaching. Hello, my name is Gamerzak and welcome to my 25 upcoming PC strategy games in 2020 and 2021 list. Now, the games in this video focus on real-time strategies and 4Xs, just so you know what we're getting into, and we also have a dozen bonus games at the end, so be sure to watch all the way through so you don't miss the kind of strategic experience you're aiming for. If you appreciate if you appreciate what you see here, please do like, subscribe, and share the video with other strategy fans as it really does help keep this channel and these videos marching along. Alright, now let's get started. Beginning with historical 4Xs, it's Humankind by Amplitude Studios. After a bizarre reveal trailer of a caveman playing synth music on a space station, this is actually a game that looks like Civilization. Historical 4X turn-based strategy where you can rewrite history by building sprawling cities, defining values, and conquering lands. A lot of the description is about creating your own unique civilization by mixing cultures. So this seems to be less tied to fixed existing civs and more free in terms of your own identity throughout a game, boasting practically limitless outcomes. Obviously, the big question here is what's this like compared to Civilization 5 and 6? Will it be different enough or is it going to be basically a reskin? This has been a tricky balance for 4X games like this in the past, many dying out and being forgotten. We'll have to wait until 2020 to see if humankind will be able to truly stand the test of time. In a similar vein, we have Birth of Civilization by Code Arts. A historical turn-based 4X game featuring a realistic world as an actual planet, tactical components to military along with climate simulation. Set from the Ice Age to the fall of the Western Roman Empire, you'll be playing through the ages on hexagonal tiles and your civilization will progress in a non-linear fashion. Obviously, this is a game inspired by the Civilization series as well, and I get the feeling that many game developers are looking to make their own version to compete recently. Probably because there is an audience that aren't quite as happy with Civilization VI. But either way, it's unclear if something like this, which does look a bit unpolished at the moment to be honest, will be able to knock Civ off its pedestal. Developing for a 2020 Early Access release, Birth of Civilization could be another Civ-like strategy game that might be for you. And then we have Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign by Black Sea Games. A game teased for a year, and I mentioned this in last year's list, many have been awaiting official confirmation of a new Knights of Honor game. Choose your kingdom, wrestle control of Europe, manage provinces, raise armies, engage in diplomacy, and there's a touch of espionage too in this real-time grand strategy. 16 years after the original game, this one is promising a new take on the genre with a living world and it's accessible by not being too confusing or complex, but that does risk it lacking depth, but also will be great for those new to grand strategies. It looks wonderful at first glance and the real-time world is something I first saw with Lords of the Realm 3, where if you take control of a battle, the overworld continues to run, so your attention becomes an important resource. With much anticipation, the release window is set for 2020 and we can hope Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign can actually live up to all the grand expectations. Another year, another Total War game, and this time we have Total War Saga Troy by Creative Assembly. Set in the Bronze Age Mediterranean during the 20-year Trojan War, you can expect what Total War is all about. In a setting inspired by Homer's Iliad, grand turn-based empire management and large-scale real-time battles. Okay, we've seen a lot of Total War games come and go these few years, ups and downs, so it's hard to say whether this is going to be a good one or not. Arena shut down and Britannia wasn't all that well received with mixed reviews on Steam, but people liked Three Kingdoms, so maybe it's now on an upward trend? The theme alone might carry it for you. Lots of people like Troy and Greece as a setting. So if you're interested, then keep your eyes set on Total War Saga Troy and try to figure out if you want to get into this one or not. Next up, we've got Crusader Kings 3 by Paradox Development Studio. 
A new generation of monarchy is on the way in this grand strategy game with some role-playing elements. Shape your dynasty by choosing lifestyles that suit personalities, build a mighty kingdom through war and politics, and experience weird dramatic history as stories, characters, and plots develop through the generations. It's a paradox game, so we could expect what they usually do, which is to have a ton of DLC for the game over the years. I mean, Crusader Kings 2 has a whopping 65 items in its biggest bundle. But so far it's looking promising, and it is a more human approach to a grand strategy, something that will appeal to a slightly different type of gamer. Plotting for a 2020 release date, we can start ruling our kingdom and creating a legacy in Crusader Kings 3 soon. Now we're going a bit fantasy, starting with Songs of Conquest by Lava Potion. Inspired by the old Heroes of Might and Magic, this is an old-school turn-based 4X game with classic adventure strategy. The first thing that stands out is the phenomenal pixel art style that is also kind of 3D, so for fans of that aesthetic, you'll at least love looking at this one. Important to remember that art alone doesn't make a good game, but there will be kingdom building, army raising, exploration, magic, loot, and monsters, along with four different factions to play. There will be a level editor for the community to make their own maps, and at least local multiplayer will be available at the start, but the aim is to open up full multiplayer down the line. Marking down late 2020 as the release window, you can keep listening to Songs of Conquest until then to see how it develops. Next up, we've got Trolls Cog by Andreas Carlsen. Set in a forested fantasy world, this is a game about building up a village and expanding into the unknown environment around you. An open world RTS with city builder elements, economic engine building, and tactical battles, you'll be securing resources, completing quests, and engaging in diplomacy. The graphical style has detailed textures but is blocky, something I know some people have issues with, but overall it still looks decent. It entered early access in the second half of 2019 and looking at a full release for quarter 2 2020, so if you find yourself wanting to explore more of Trolls Cog, look up some gameplay and see if you want to begin now or wait for release. And then for a weird one with The First Men by Gathering Tree. This is one that's a bit hard to explain. You build a base slash colony as you harvest nearby resources and breed new generations of people that inherit traits. There are five different tech trees that unlock more buildings and professions, which allow you to explore more of the world, get through obstacles, and fight in tactical combat. It's kind of like Knights and Merchants plus Don't Starve, and the art style is a mix of cartoony and painted. Everything is super rough at the time of making this video though, so absolutely everything is subject to change and nothing is really pinned down. Having played a bit of it, I can see the potential and it can be fun, but it might be hard to explain the game to people who would even enjoy playing it, because it's kind of a bit of a lot of things. Hopefully the first men manages to settle down and figure out more of what it is over the next year, and we can see what it's trying to be, as it should be getting some kind of 2020 release. And now for something completely different, it's Touch Type Tail by Pumpernickel Studio. Typing as a means to control a real-time strategy game. An odd choice of controls, but reports are that it's actually way better than you would expect. Barbarians are at the gates and the throne is empty. This game has a story-rich campaign and online competitive multiplayer designed to satisfy RTS veterans and newcomers to the genre. The typing controls could just be a stroke of genius to give a fresh strategic experience, but I can see some just won't like it. It could be real clunky if they don't get it right too. Betas took place in 2019 and they're now looking to set a 2020 release date, so if you enjoyed Typing of the Dead or other typing games, then you might want to give Touch Type Tail a try. And then we have A Year of Rain by Daedalic Entertainment. A desolate realm kept in flux by constant battle, choose a faction, team up with another, and battle in 2v2 matches. Looking to be a competitive co-op RTS, so far this one looks like it has a lot of potential to meet the needs of classic RTS fans while keeping things fresh. 
but it's always hard to call it so early with games like these. One issue is, as an ongoing competitive multiplayer game, it will need a monetization model to keep development going, and nothing has been confirmed on how they're going to do that right now. Meant to enter early access in late 2019, we should be seeing a more complete version through 2020. And as with any game trying to be an eSport, we'll see a year of rain find notable success or slowly fade away. Going underground, we have Empires of the Undergrowth by Slug Disco Studios. A combination of Dungeon Keeper and Sim Ant, this game is reminiscent of the old Empires of the Ants game and has a lot going for it. Colony management with different ant species, resource collecting, and defending against outside bugs and rival ants. This has a lot of personality too with the voice acting and music that make a mark. The single player campaign has a lot of progression and your colony can be min-maxed to your liking. Amount of content is a bit of a concern though, as it might be a case of it being good but not having enough of it. And of course ants aren't for everyone. But there is a free demo that you can check out on Steam. Basically, if you like Dungeon Keeper and Ants, then check out Empires of the Undergrowth. Next up, we've got Module War by Biohex Games. Here's one game that we discovered last year, and it's still an odd one, calling itself a modular RTS. You control an alien creature that can grow different organs and acts as your base. Splitting and reattaching to adapt on the go is part of it too, so you can adjust to your own playstyle. Same with your units where you can have a floating behemoth or a swarm of smaller entities. Planning to have a story-driven single-player campaign involving human exploiters and competitive multiplayer, this isn't going to be the type of game for everyone but might be interesting to keep an eye or eyes on. Attempting to enter early access on Steam by the end of 2019, Modular is trying to reach full growth by 2020. We now have a few games inspired by Master of Orion, and the first one is Astra Exodus by Atomic Kaiser. Following in the footsteps of the old Master of Orion 2, this is a retro-styled single-player turn-based 4x strategy game set with a multiple-choice narrative through a campaign. Combat is real-time tactics in a top-down view, in space and on the ground, design your own spaceships, there's a semi-randomized research grid for replayability, various alien factions are available, and a sandbox mode for free play will be a thing too. Visually, there is a bit of a cartoony aspect to it which might turn some of you away, and having more recently played Master of Orion 2 myself, this game has a lot to live up to. Modding capabilities are a focus though, so if the community rallies to Astra Exodus, this might have a bright future. Continuing the theme, it's Dominus Galaxia by Starchart Interactive. A 4x strategy game set in space with a focus on making strategic decisions more important while minimizing micro and busy work. It has turn-based gameplay on hexes, slider-based settings for controlling your empire with ease, a detailed ship designer, options for fighting against different types of AI, a semi-random tech tree, diplomacy, and more. Though it has to be said that there's only local multiplayer with Hot Seat, as networked multiplayer was a Kickstarter goal a bit out of reach. There's already a free demo that you can check out on Steam, which also helped the Kickstarter hit its more humble base goal of 20,000 Canadian dollars. So it is a smaller production, but is working towards a 2021 release. We can never be sure if those funds are going to be enough to get this game to the finish line, but you can check out Dominus Galaxia right now, and we'll keep its development in mind for the next two years. Then we have Eons of War by Vasinov Games. Subtitling itself a fast-paced grand strategy game set in space, here you take control of an advanced civilization in an ever-changing galaxy. You'll be collecting star energy, mining asteroids, and expanding your population and economy by building energy spheres, harvesters, and ring worlds. You can face off against AI in single player or join other players in custom multiplayer arenas. This is one trying to achieve fast paced battles without tedious micromanagement, which of course isn't going to be for everyone, but it could be for you. This is looking colorful, quirky, and hopefully it's quality too. The plan is to release in 2020, so Eons of War isn't too far off, and we'll see if it can actually deliver. Still doing Space 4X's, it's Age of Space by Podpal Games. 
Evolve from obscurity into a galactic superpower. Combining real-time economic gameplay with tactical combat, you're a mercenary who works for clients in a universe going through a war of liberation, and you can choose sides. Squad scale RTS is an element here, which is the thing that's meant to make this stand out. Plus, there's supposed to be a single player campaign and co-op modes. Now, this has a when it's done release date, so it's unclear how much progress it'll make over the next year. With some luck, Age of Space will become playable sooner rather than later, and we can get a better idea of how it's shaping up. Next, we've got Pax Nova by Grey Wolf Entertainment. You know how this section of the list has been going, so yes, this is a sci-fi turn-based 4X set in space, and here you lead your faction to their fates in a rivalry between three races. Explore worlds, build cities, expand your influence, and fight battles in space, along with down on planets. It's another one with a mix of space and planet-side gameplay, and it's kind of the thing that's setting this one apart. And it also has customizable ships, quests, and a randomized tech tree, along with unique victory conditions. It's been in early access in 2019 with mixed reviews, which isn't very reassuring. Plus, this was meant to release by late 2019, but some things took a little longer than expected, but it was probably worth it by the looks of things, as the game got both visual and gameplay improvements. And now Pax Nova should be finally releasing by early 2020. If you're interested in some MMO with your strategy, we've got a couple, and one is Outscape by IDA Games. This one is a real-time strategy MMO set in space, which sounds like a massive undertaking. Seek out planets to colonize, use resources to build ships, and defend your worlds in a persistently running universe that has millions of planets where all players are in the same server. If you're not an MMO fan, you can have a private game with friends, which is a nice option. It's been going through beta at the end of 2019, and there's no specific release date, but I'd expect it to be able to release within a year since it's in version 0.9 already, and they seem to be pretty confident on delivering. Those strategy MMO success stories are a rarity, so I'd be a little cautious getting into it anyway. Outscape calls itself the world's first space strategy MMO, but this next game is trying to compete, so you let me know what you think of that. That game is Starborn Sovereign Space by Solid Clouds. Staying in space with another MMO RTS, this is one that we've been watching for a while, and it's gotten a lot of attention over the last year or so. Play alongside thousands of players in the same universe as you grow your empire and conquer galaxies. Collect resources, build stations, raise fleets, launch raids, uncover missions, and colonize planets, choosing from six distinct specializations to cater to your playstyle. It's officially in alpha, which could mean a lot of things nowadays, but basically it's playable and free, so you can easily have a closer inspection yourself and decide if it's good or not. If you think it might be your thing, give Starborn Sovereign Space a go. Coming back down from space, we have War Selection by Glyph Worlds. Pseudo history from the Stone Age to modern day. This is an RTS with Armageddon mode and 62 players in a single multiplayer match, which sounds a bit crazy, but it's got some interesting notes. Going through eight historical eras, you'll be defining your civilization on the go and customizing your options while trying to keep up with the rest. Overall, it seems intriguing, but a little rough, and maybe lacking in refinement. Alternative history RTS can end up pretty bland as we've seen many try this, but the flexibility as you progress through the ages and having many dozens of players in a single match might be enough to set this apart and carve a niche for itself on the strategic landscape. It's in early access now on Steam at the end of 2019, and it will get a full release soon as the storyline campaign is completed. So have a look now if you think you might be interested, and check back later if War Selection is not quite there yet for you. Going back in history once again, it's Lords and Peasants by Inverted Cat Games. What used to look really unfinished a year ago, this seems to be building up to something that might be pretty decent. This is a medieval RTS where you start out as a lord of a small village and develop it into a prospering city with the expected raising of armies and conquering of opponents. There are plans for single and multiplayer modes with up to 16 players in a match on procedurally generated maps along with mod support. 
It's looking a lot better than the last time we listed this, so hopefully once everything is put together, it's actually fun to play. There's no fixed release date though, so it's kind of a guess that it'll become playable within the next two years. But if development continues at the current pace, I don't see why Lords and Peasants won't be able to get at least an early access release by 2021. Going to the Far East, we have Stronghold Warlords by Firefly Studios. For the first time, Stronghold takes on an entirely new setting in East Asia. You can expect what the series is known for, fortress building, military engagement, and economic management, but this time it's said to be more inspired by earlier games, with a stronger focus on economics. There's also a new Warlord mechanic, which is kind of a diplomacy system. When the game was revealed, the art style took some people by surprise. It's understandably a bit of a shock and might not be to everyone's taste. But personally, I don't think it's that bad and it has a kind of Battle Realms charm to it. What's really important is whether or not it's a good game, which Firefly has had its ups and downs over the years. So let's hope Stronghold Warlords is not just new, but also has some solid gameplay. And then we've got The Settlers by Blue Bite. We've had the Settlers history collection for a while now, which was a nice blast from the past, and now we have a new game on the way. It's the latest main title in the series, and a big question is whether it's going to be more like the originals or the newer ones, where both styles have their fans. Originally intending to release in 2019, towards the end of the year there was no real news or gameplay reveals, so as expected it was delayed into 2020. Hopefully we'll see more of the new Settlers game as we get into the new year, and you'll be able to decide whether the game takes a direction that you love or not. Though let's be honest, there's no choice of gameplay style that would make everyone happy. Going a bit more modern, it's Panzer Corps 2 by Flashback Games. The first Panzer Corps was a spiritual successor to Panzer General, and with Fantasy General 2 releasing in later 2019, we've had some opportunity to get back into this style of strategic gameplay. If you've been wanting a more realistic setting like World War II though, then this should be more up your alley. Aiming to bring the series to a whole new level of refinement, you can expect a ton of content like over a thousand types of units, a branching campaign of over 60 scenarios, co-op and multiplayer modes, and a comprehensive editor for user-made scenarios. They're going through the final stages of development at the end of 2019, so we can expect an early 2020 release for Panzer Corps 2, unless something goes right and we get it early, or wrong and we get it late. Finally, we have Iron Harvest by King Art. One of the most anticipated RTSs in development, this is a diesel punk themed game inspired by the alternate reality of the 1920 plus universe set just after the end of the Great War. Claiming to be the real time strategy that fans actually want, they're trying to deliver on that promise by making a game filled with character, extensive story based campaigns and classic RTS gameplay with co-op and competitive multiplayer. It sounds like everything that a strategy game fan wants now nowadays, and it's looking good working up to a September 2020 release date. I always have to caution about games turning out not so well, and you know it might be delayed. But overall, Iron Harvest is looking like it could be one of the best releases we've had in a while. Just hoping it really does deliver everything it's saying it'll be. Alright, now for 12 bonus games, but remember if you made it this far you probably enjoyed your time here and it would be greatly appreciated if you could like, subscribe, share this video and ring that bell, as it really does help keep this channel running. Also, if you really like me, you can support more directly by using the Humble Bundle referral link, perusing my gaming merch store where I design my own products, or checking out the Patreon, all linked down below along with the Discord community, Twitch live streams, and social media accounts where I create even more content like drawings, photos, and written articles. Now for some bonus games that are on the horizon, we have Age of Empires 4, which we know is on the way, but with Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition needing to come first, this might be a while. Then we have Homeworld 3 that was announced. The announcement came with a fig crowdfunding campaign though, which did raise some eyebrows since it is being published by Gearbox, but the campaign was more about including the community in the development rather than raising money, though they did raise a considerable amount of money too. 
There's Edge of Chaos, which is waiting for a Kickstarter campaign to run. Gates of a Ruined Empire, a pre-alpha public release is being worked on. And then there'll be a Kickstarter campaign after that. Knight's Province, it's been in development since 2013, and it'll probably take a while longer. Aurora Air, an RTS village tower defense by a solo dev. And of course, Zero AD, which has been in development for a long time, but it's a nice indie Age of Empires alternative. Then we have some remasters with Warcraft 3 Reforged, Command & Conquer Remasters, which we actually have some footage of now, Skylords Reborn, which is basically fan-revived Battleforge, Age of Empires Online is still going, being run by fans under the name Project Celeste, and I mentioned earlier Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition is on the way, and there are some thoughts about an Age of Mythology Definitive Edition. It's not confirmed, but they're thinking about it. And that's it. 25 upcoming strategy games that should be releasing through 2020 and some into 2021, depending on their developments. Which do you think are the real fighters and which are just targets? Also, here's something I'd like to know from you. Do you think it's possible to have another golden age of strategy games, or is gaming in general just so different compared to the past decades for it to happen? Either way, if you'd like to see more strategy content, you can check out the classic and new games on the channel, like Age of Empires, Civilization, Stronghold, and more, or all the other new games I cover in the Gamer Encounters series. Also, this is only one of six main lists I make every year, so there are plenty more upcoming games I can show you in the other genres. Alright, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed it and found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video.